morning, how you doing today? This is another video. I'm going to keep them coming. So y'all better be prepared. Like I said previously, you better get a pen and a pencil. You know what I'm saying? Write some of this stuff down. Today I was listening to Chancellor Williams. If you're not aware of who he is, he's a professor. Chancellor Williams. From Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. This article needs additional citations for verification. Please help improve this article by adding citations to reliable sources. Unsourced material may be challenged and removed. Find sources, Chancellor Williams, News Times, Newspapers Times, Books Times, Scholar Times, JSTOR, July 2009, learn how and when to remove this template message. Chancellor Williams. Born. Chancellor James Williams, December 22, 1893, Bennettsville, South Carolina. Died. December 7, 1992, aged 98, Providence Hospital in Washington, D.C. Pen name. James Williams. Occupation. Writer, historian, sociologist. Nationality. America. Subject. Egyptology. Literary movement. Afrocentrism. Notable works. The Destruction of Black Civilization. Chancellor Williams, December 22, 1893 to December 7, 1992, was an American sociologist, historian, and writer. He is noted for his work on African civilizations prior to encounters with Europeans. His major work is The Destruction of Black Civilization, 1971-1974. Williams remains a key figure in the Afrocentrist discourse. He asserted the validity of the discredited Black Egyptian hypothesis and that ancient Egypt was predominantly a Black civilization. Contents One Early Life, Migration, and Education Early Life, Migration, and Education, Edit Williams was born on December 22, 1893, in Bennettsville, South Carolina as the last of five children. His father had been born into slavery and had grown up to gain freedom and voting after the American Civil War. His mother Dorothy and Williams worked as a cook, nurse, and evangelist. The family suffered after Democrats regained power in the state legislature in the late 19th century and passed bills disfranchising black citizens, as well as imposing racial segregation and white supremacy under Jim Crow. Williams' innate curiosity about racial inequality and cultural struggles, particularly those of African Americans, began as early as his fifth grade year. Encouraged by a sixth grade teacher, he sold The Crisis, published by the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, NAACP, and the Norfolk Journal and Guide, as well as reading them and using their recommended books to direct his studies. One. Years later, he was quoted in an interview as saying, I was very sensitive about the position of black people in the town. I wanted to know how you explain this great difference. How is it that we were in such low circumstances as compared to the whites? And when they answered slavery as the explanation, then I wanted to know where we came from, citation needed. As part of the great migration out of the rural south, the Williams family moved to Washington, D.C., in 1910. His father hoped for more opportunity there, especially in education, and Williams graduated from Armstrong Technical High School. Two, Williams' mother died in 1925, leaving his father a widower. All their children were grown by then. After working for a while, Williams entered college at Howard University, a historically black college. He earned an undergraduate degree in education in 1930, followed by a master's degree in history in 1935. After completing a doctoral dissertation on the socio-economic significance of the storefront church movement in the United States since 1920, he was awarded a PhD in sociology by American University in 1949. 2. International Studies, Edit. 
Williams began his studies abroad in England as a visiting professor to the universities of Oxford and London in 1953 and 1954. In 1956, he did field research in African history at Ghana's University College. At that time, his focus was on African achievements and the many self-ruling civilizations that had arisen and operated on the continent long before the coming of Europeans or East Asians. His last study, completed in 1964, covered 26 countries and more than 100 language groupings. Career Edit in 1935 Williams started as administrative principal for the Cheltenham School for Boys in Maryland. Four years later he became a teacher in the Washington, D.C., public schools. With World War II imminent, he entered the civil service system in the federal government in 1941, serving as section chief of the Census Bureau, a statistician for War Relocation Board, and an economist in Office of Price Administration. In 1946 he returned to his alma mater Howard University as a social science instructor, teaching until 1952. He transferred to the history department. By the 1960s, he was lecturing and writing about African history from a position of Afrocentrism. He concentrated on African civilizations before the European encounter, and was one of a group of scholars who asserted that Egypt had been a black civilization. He was a scholar at Howard until his retirement in 1966. Afterward he continued his studies and writing. The Destruction of Black Civilization, Edit In 1971-1974, Williams published his major work, The Destruction of Black Civilization, Great Issues of a Race Between 4500 BC and 2000 AD. 3. The following year, the book received an award from the Black Academy of Arts and Letters, Ball, founded in New York in 1969, 4. Death, Edit. Williams died of respiratory failure on December 7, 1992, aged 98, at Providence Hospital in Washington, D.C. He had been a resident of the Washington Center for Aging Services for several years. He was survived by his wife of 65 years, Matty Williams of Washington, and 14 children, 36 grandchildren, 38 great-grandchildren, and 10 great-great-grandchildren, citation needed. Books, edit. The Raven, a novel of Edgar Allan Poe, 1943. That was a good story. That was a good story. Well done, well done, sir. Right, and he was breaking down history. Now, by me working in a doctor's office for 20 years, you know what I'm saying, and knowing what doctors do, they always analyze your history. They want to know who your grandmother was. They want to know who your grandfather was. They want to know who your mother and father are. They want to know who your siblings are. They want to see if you have any traits of any kind of illness within your family, if there's signs of heart disease, different things that they want to know, right? So we have to go into the history of things, right? And, you know, I'm a biblical person. I always told you that, right? I read the whole Bible and I'm not bragging. This is not bragging session, all right? And, you know, I used to uh, have videos or I have videos on here about Apostle Paul. And I always looked at him as suspect, suspect or suspicious because he was boastful to me in his writings. But now that I understand a little bit better, I can elaborate more because the Bible actually was written by scholars by people who were literate and then the time at in the earth you know what i'm saying during this time when they did commission the bible to be read you know what i mean they got the information from certain peoples that was around that witnessed certain things or they, they knew certain things you know what i mean so the bible first started as an oral tradition meaning that say like me as a a, a yoruba man 
right? Born and raised in America. Now, you would take another Yoruba man that was born and raised in Nigeria, and then you try to take both our stories, it's going to be different because we live in different spaces and in different time periods. You know what I'm saying? Because Nigerian time is ahead of American time. You know what I'm saying? So when it's 6 o'clock over here, it's 12 a.m. in Nigeria. You know what I'm saying? And I noticed certain things about that phenomenon. But to get back to the story, when you go into the Bible and you start to read, you know what I'm saying? You got to understand that it started off as an oral tradition. All right. So what had happened is that certain people came to this place. You see this place? It's Egypt. Before Egypt, it was around this area, what we call Saudi Arabia. But um, these places was called something different, right? Previously in ancient times. So let's see. I don't know if you can really like. I have to go to another um, website for you to see the different lands and we can do that soon. But look, everything started around this area. You know what I'm saying? This area you see right here is people populate. So in the beginning of the earth, according to the Bible, it was an energy. You know what I'm saying? And I would liken it to a positive energy because this energy that was hovering across the faces of this, the waters, you know what I mean? It was just water, according to the text. So this energy was hovering over the face of the waters, right? And then he saw that it was nothing but darkness on the face of the deep, 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 deep down. It was just darkness. Especially, you know, if it's no sun, it's no light source, you know what I'm saying? The waters would look very, very, very dark anyway. You can't see what's in the bottom of the ocean. You can't see, you know what I'm saying? They don't even know what's down there. It's scary down there. You don't even know if it might be the Loch Ness Monster. You know what I'm saying? Or some dinosaur, some ancient dinosaur you ain't never, you know, discovered yet. So they don't know what's in this ocean. You know what I'm saying? They like to say they know something, but they don't. You know what I mean? Everybody had their theories. So you got to understand that this positive energy was hovering over the face of the waters, right? And then the first thing that's energy summons was light let there be light and there was light now i went over this before now this light was not the sun the moon the stars this light was we call enlightenment today we call this enlightenment you know what i'm saying but the bible calls it wisdom you know what I mean? And this is the chapter we are going to stop and listen to and then pick up from there.
chapter 8. Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice? She standeth in the top of high places by the way in the places of the paths. She crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple understanding wisdom, and ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my youth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing froward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth, and right to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction, and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence, and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the froward mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine, and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me kings reign, and princes decree justice. By me princes rule, and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree that the water should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth, and my delights were with the sons of men. Now therefore hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Hear instruction, and be wise, and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. For whoso findeth me, findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me, wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me, love death. Alright, so, wisdom was with God in the beginning, and this is the light. Right? Now, the energy that you first saw was the positive energy, the stand-up energy, the, the, the number one, the letter I. I am. I. It's me. Me alone. I do this. That's what that was saying, right? But then he summons in the light, the wisdom, right? So with the wisdom, he was able to say, let me divide the darkness and the light. Let me divide it. And that was the first day or the first time. And I expressed that before, right? And then, then um, what happened on the second day? I'm kind of like lost right now. Well, on the second day, I believe he said, let there be light. That was the first day. The second day he divided the lightness for the darkness, right? I believe. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I might be wrong, but I don't know. I gotta look over. I gotta look it over. But in the third day, because the second day, I think he did divide the, the light from the darkness or the, the second time, right? Because I expressed to you in one of the other videos that one day to God could be a trillion years. You don't know. You're not in that time space. You wasn't born then. You don't know. You're guessing that. You're doing theories. You're using your hypothesis and scientific theories to come up with truth. And it's not the truth. You need a theorem for that. All right. So he divided the waters and then he made land, right? So let's look at the land. Hold on. Is there a view that we can just look at the land? Oh, what's this? All right. Oh, where's the... uh uh? We don't want to see no words. How you do that? No. 
It did something. Ho, ho, ho. We're going back. Let's go back. Right here. Anyway, you're going to see the works right now. But it was nothing but land. And you got to remember that all these lands were joined together. You can see right here where Africa is supposed to join in with North America. You can see that. You can see if you do puzzles like I do, you can see how the land separated. You know what I'm saying? It looked like something is missing from right here. You know what I'm saying? This looked like it's supposed to be a piece of that. I guess this is Madagascar right here. This is Madagascar. Yeah, I'm right. See? This is Madagascar. And um, all these lands were together, right? You know what I mean? And um, God said, in the third day, according to Genesis chapter 2, you know what I mean? Before he created grass and before he put any herb bearing seed, he created man and woman at that time in space. You got to understand that. You know what I'm saying? So Adam and Eve, though in that time in space, was created on the third day. You know what I'm saying? So you got the wisdom, then you got the knowledge. Then Adam was created which is the understanding. You understand? Do you do you understand that? So you got the wisdom, who is the light, you know, the, the Holy Spirit, some people want to say, but the light, then you have the knowledge, who is the powerful one, the I am, that I am, then you had to understand it, which is Adam and Eve, right? If you want, I'm just summarizing it so I could keep on going because, you know, this is going to be a little longer than normal, right? So, the Bible says he created a garden east of Eden. Now, this is Eden. This whole territory right here. You got to understand that the um, Germans and the Europeans, they came together to give you all these land masses and divide these territory. But in the beginning, it was just one big land mass. It wasn't no Nigeria. It wasn't no, these names didn't exist then. You know what I'm saying? You, people go by, not by the name Nigeria. They don't go by this. The people do not really actually go by the name Nigeria. I'm just using this for experience because my people are Yoruba. So my people dwell here in Yoruba land where you see Ife, Ibada. Um, look at this. Nikki. When it what? Nikki. Did I just see? What? That say Nikki? That's funny. Anyway, that's my sister's name. <laughs> that's funny. But anyway, um, you see all these places. This is the Biafra. You know what I'm saying? This is Edo. This is Akure. You know what I'm saying? So they go by these names. They don't really necessarily go by the nig nigger Nigeria, but Nigeria. Niger area. You know what I mean? The Niger area. The Niger area. Or the, you know, in America, they're going to say nigger. You know what I'm saying? Because you pronounce the G most most likely in America is good, 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 goat, God, great, and all that stuff. You got to go back to elementary school with that. But anyway, so you can see the people do not really necessarily, even though they want to tell you, yeah, I'm Nigerian because that's how they going to identify them now. But in ancient times, the people identified by their different local tribes and stuff like that in the areas that they named themselves, not no other people. You see all this? These are uh, indigenous words for the people that live. You see Edo right there? Yeah, that's so that's indigenous words. Oba, you see that? Undo, you see that? That's where my people from right here. But I'm just showing you that. So he created a garden in the 
eastward. Now, 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 I got the map like this, right? Because everything I told you started like around this area. You know what I'm saying? Around this area, around here. You know what I'm saying? According to the Bible. You know what I mean? But I'm going to get into everything. So just be patient. But you know what I mean? Um, this is Eden, right? He created a garden eastward of Eden. And then he put the man to, to tend the garden. So where is that garden? What is this? Saho, Tome, and Prince Bay. Right? I discovered this on the hump. You know what I mean? Just looking at the map. And I got a map at my house that's upside down, according to you. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think it's upside down. I think this is the right way you're supposed to look at the map. Just because everything started from this area. And you know, Egypt is like one of the, the, the ancient civilizations, right? And then if you come in from the Nile area, which is a great river, right? You see that the Nile flows this way. You know what I'm saying? It flows this. Is that the Nile? I'm not pointing. Hold on. Let's see if this is the Nile. Is this the Nile? It's a little like a river. Oh, no. That's not the Nile. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, is this the Nile? No, that's the Gulf. Hold on. What is the Nile? This is Cairo. This look like the river right there. What's that? This could be the Nile. Anyway, I think this might be a Nile River. This looked like a river. But then, this is Luxor and all these great places of Abu... What is it? What they used to call it? Kemet? Ancient Kemet? Kemetic people? Shemetic? Kemetic? Anyway, so the river flows this way, flows downwards, you know what I'm saying? But now if you flip this around, which I'm not going to do, you would say it flows upwards. But no, this is the cradle of civilization right here in Africa. Okay, so he made a garden eastward. Is it this way east? Like, if you look at it, east is going what, right or left? I think west is left, right? And east go this way, right? All right. So, eastward in Eden, a little garden, which I think is this place. This is just my opinion. All right. And they found it. You know what I'm saying? They've been found it. It's been here. Trinidade, Bombay. Santana. Santana. Um, anyway. So he put him in the garden of the tended, and then he gave him an assignment to name all the animals in this territory. Right. So after Adam or Atom, this evil or you know what I'm saying? After he named the at um the the the, the animals. Right. God put him to sleep. Right. And then took one of his ribs and created the wool man, the wool man or the 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 wool man. All right. So created her and Adam knew that was his bone of his bone and the flesh of his flesh. And you know what I'm saying? They was together. But they wasn't really doing anything. They was just probably courting each other at the time. You got to understand they were just newly created. So they're kind of young. They don't really know nothing. So that's why God or the stand up power is the father. Because, you know, when you when you as a child or if you a son and you chilling in the house playing video games all day. And the grass need to be cut. Your daddy is not playing games with you. You got to cut the grass, yo. You know what I mean? You can't just be sitting up in the house, wasting all this electricity, eating up all the food. You know what I'm saying? And you ain't putting in no work. You got to be like your daddy 
and put in work. You know what I'm saying? But what kind of work was Adam really supposed to be doing? Was he supposed to be a was he supposed to be a tiller of the ground for real? Or was he supposed to be a creator like his father? Um, we about to go there. But the story happens to say that God commanded Adam and gave him instructions. And this is he gave him first instructions in the name of animals. He told him not to eat of a certain tree. Now it's two trees. He can eat of the tree of life. Now who gives life? Who gave life? That's God. Right. But do not eat of the wisdom of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Do not. Don't deal with that one. But any other tree in the garden, you can deal with. All right. But the story makes a twist and says a serpent beguiled the woman. So now this story really starts to get interesting, right? And I believe this is still during the third day or the third millennium or whatever you want to say it is. You know what I'm saying? You do not know the time and space that the Bible is speaking of. And remember, the Bible is an oral tradition in the beginning. Chapter 31. And Moses went and spake these words unto all Israel. And he said unto them, I am an hundred and twenty years old this day. I can no more go out and come in. Also the Lord has said unto me, Thou shalt not go over this Jordan. The Lord thy God, he will go over before thee, and he will destroy these nations from before thee, and thou shalt possess them, and Joshua. He shall go over before thee, as the Lord has said. And the Lord shall do unto them, as he did to Sihon and to Og, kings of the Amorites, and unto the land of them whom he destroyed. And the Lord shall give them up before your face, that ye may do unto them according unto all the commandments which I have commanded you. Be strong, and of a good courage, fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. And Moses called unto Joshua, and said unto him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and of good courage, for thou must go with this people unto the land which the Lord hath sworn unto their fathers to give them, and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee, he will be with thee, he will not fail thee, neither forsake thee, fear not, neither be dismayed. And Moses wrote this law, and delivered it unto the priests, the sons of Levi, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and unto all the elders of Israel. And Moses commanded them, saying, At the end of every seven years, in the solemnity of the year of release, in the feast of tabernacles, when all Israel is come to appear before the Lord thy God, in the place which he shall choose, thou shalt read this law before all Israel in their hearing. Gather the people together, men and women and children, and thy stranger that is within thy gates, that they may hear, and that they may learn, and fear the Lord your God, and observe to do all the words of this law, and that their children which have not known anything may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God, as long as ye live in the land whither ye go over Jordan to possess it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thy days approach that thou must die. Call Joshua and present yourselves in the tabernacle of the congregation, that I may give him a charge. And Moses and Joshua went, and presented themselves in the tabernacle of the congregation. And the Lord appeared in the tabernacle in a pillar of a cloud, and the pillar of the cloud stood over the door of the tabernacle. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, and this people will rise up, and go a-whoring after the gods of the strangers of the land, whither they go to be among them, and will forsake me, and break my covenant which I have made with them. Then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them, and I will hide my face from them, and they shall be devoured, and many evils and troubles shall befall them, so that they will say in that day, Are not these evils come upon us, because our God is not among us? And I will surely hide my face in that day, for all the evils which they shall have wrought, in that they are turned unto other gods. Now therefore write ye this song for you, and teach it the children of Israel, put it in their mouths, that this song may be a witness for me against the children of Israel. For when I shall have brought them into the land which I swear unto their fathers, 
that floweth with milk and honey, and they shall have eaten and filled themselves and waxen fat, then will they turn unto other gods, and serve them, and provoke me, and break my covenant. And it shall come to pass, when many evils and troubles are befallen them, that this song shall testify against them as a witness, for it shall not be forgotten out of the mouths of their seed. For I know their imagination which they go about even now, before I have brought them into the land which I swear. Moses therefore wrote this song the same day, and taught it the children of Israel. And he gave Joshua the son of Nun a charge, and said, Be strong, and of a good courage, for thou shalt bring the children of Israel into the land which I swear unto them, and I will be with thee. And it came to pass, when Moses had made an end of writing the words of this law in a book, until they were finished, that Moses commanded the Levites which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, saying, Take this book of the law, and put it in the side of the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there for a witness against thee. For I know thy rebellion, and thy stiff neck. Behold, while I am yet alive with you this day, ye have been rebellious against the Lord, and how much more after my death. Gather unto me all the elders of your tribes and your officers, that I may speak these words in their ears, and call heaven and earth to record against them. For I know that after my death ye will utterly corrupt yourselves, and turn aside from the way which I have commanded you. And evil will befall you in the latter days, because ye will do evil in the sight of the Lord, to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. And Moses spake in the ears of all the congregation of Israel the words of this song, until they were ended. Chapter Before the Greeks came and say, hey, we don't understand what you're saying. You got to write it down for us in our language. Anyway, we won't get there. Chancellor Williams will break that down to you. But anyway, um, what happened? Um, so Adam was given an assignment and then the serpent came to Eve, the wife of Adam or the spouse or the companion or whatever you want to call her, the sister. You know, people go into to those terms, but this is a whole different time and space. You know what I'm saying? It was no sisters back then. That's a European. Uh, that's somebody else's uh, interpretation of what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so the serpent beguiled it, the woman and told her something that she probably didn't know previously. So now if you understand what the fruit was, you know what I'm saying? And you understand the story as it proceeds at the end of the whole thing, they got kicked out of the garden for disobeying the power, the I am the power, but they listened to a negative power who was wise enough to instruct the woman with her husband there. Now, I'm going to analyze this for you so you can get this understanding. Like, right now, me as a man, I'm not letting no other dude talk to my wife. It's like, yo, it's jealousy there. I don't want my wife to be corrupted by no other dude because I'm knowledgeable about what dudes really want from my wife. You know what I'm saying? But if it's my mother or if it's my or if you're just another woman, you know, maybe maybe an older woman may come away and say, let me tell you something, sweetie. Let me tell you something about something. The only reason why they tell you not to, dip, to, to, to mess with me is because as soon as I start talking to you, <laughs> your eyes is going to be open and you're going to know you can be like God. <laughs> when that woman heard that from that woman, she like, oh, my goodness, I want to be like God. And she went crazy, yo. And she went crazy, yo. And I remember the Mac, and I didn't know it was the Mac until I seen the Mac. And it was like, yo, do not give these girls no money. Give them bomb clothes, bomb anything you can bomb, but do not give her no money. Because the resort is for the woman to go crazy. But this is beyond money now, yo. Women want money so they can get the power, so they can be like God and command men to do. No, you command the children. 
You don't tell your husband what, what a man is supposed to be. He's not your daddy. He's your husband. Your daddy is who your daddy is. You know what I'm saying? That's your daddy. He got his own daddy. So you worry about that. And you understand that. But no, she won't be like God. And now she she she's insinuating. Now that's a powerful word. In sin you ate. So the serpent in sin ate. She insinuated something to Eve. Right? And Eve ate it up. You know, spiritually, like, yeah, yeah, this is a good stuff. I'm gonna go tell my husband. The husband was right there, so he ate it up too. And then they realized something. Oh my goodness. We are butt naked. We gotta go hurry up and hide. I don't like this. I feel strange. I didn't know we was naked in the beginning, but now I know we run around right here like beasts, like the animals in the streets. No, we not no animal. We men. We mankind. We are a kind of man. You know what I'm saying? We are human. You know what I'm saying? We need to put on some clothes. So they went to some leaves and sold them some clothes, right? Then the stand-up character comes and say, hey, where are you? And then Adam came and said, hey, I was hiding because I was scared because we was butt naked. And then, they, you know, came up with his excuse. And then the wise one, I mean, the knowledgeable one said, hey, who said you was naked, though? And then he was like, oh, have you eaten up that tree that I told you? Did you listen to that? Yo, did you listen to her? Oh, oh the woman, yeah, man, told me to listen, and I listened. Yeah, man, the woman was like, oh, the serpent tricked me. I didn't know. <laughs> hey, yo, see, this is the devil right here. Every time I'm doing something, the devil caught. See, you see how this works? Anyway, you think about that. I got to answer this call. Yo. You create straight by braces, new sensations. I'm big enough the West African nations. You create straight by braces, new sensations. I'm big enough the West African nations. You create straight by braces, new sensations. I'm big enough the West Sensations. I'm big enough, the West African nations. All my Yoruba people come 
Thank <laughs> you.